Hey y'all, this is BG Codes and I am Brad Garropy. Gatsby recently announced incremental build support in Gatsby Cloud, and today I'm gonna to be walking you through how to enable that in Netlify. So first off, here's the blog post from Kyle Matthews, uh, the founder of Gatsby, announcing incremental builds in Gatsby Cloud. Now what's super nice is that most of my websites are hosted and built on Netlify, and Jason Langsdorf of Netlify wrote a blog post about how to enable these incremental builds of Gatsby sites on Netlify. So we're going to follow through this today and see if it gets us any faster build times. Uh, we're going to be doing this on my own website, bradgarropy.com. And so let's check the current build times. I created a brand new branch here called Gib, Gatsby Incremental Builds. And the first one built in one minute and 18 seconds. So that's pretty dang fast as it is. Uh, but hey, maybe these incremental builds can speed this up. So let's hop back to Jason's article and start following the instructions. So step one, upgrade Gatsby to v2.20.4. So here is uh, my website. We're going to check package.json and see the Gatsby version. Yes, it looks like this is higher than 2.20.4. We can move on to step two. Enable Netlify build plugins. So if you go to your uh, sites page, you'll see at the top right, build plugins. You can click that and then click enable the beta and then choose the website that you want to enable. In this case, this one's called Brad Garropy and I'll press enable and we're all done. And now I'll just navigate back to the bradgarropy.com website and go to the deploys page again. Okay, that's all set. Build plugins have been enabled. Third is we actually need to add a build plugin. Uh, and this is gonna be the Netlify plugin Gatsby cache. This is what's gonna save the cache between builds for us. So this is gonna be over in our netlify.toml file and we'll just add it here. Now we can move on to step four, uh, update the build command with the experimental page build on data changes flag. So we're just gonna grab this whole thing. It also has this little option at the end called log pages. This will actually log out uh, the changes that it detected in between builds. So we'll open up our package.json again, go to our build command and update this. Now there are two gotchas here. Number one, first off, I'm on Windows, so if I wanna run this command locally, I have to install something called cross env to enable declaring environment variables in line like this. So we can install that with npm i save dev cross env. If you're on a, a Linux box or a, a, an Apple computer, then this isn't an issue. Now, the second gotcha is make sure Netlify is running this build command. I know sometimes Netlify detects if it's a Gatsby website. And you can confirm that by going to uh, overview, let's see, site settings, build and deploy, and you'll see a build command here. This is called Gatsby build. Now you can override this by clicking edit right here copy and pasting in that long command, uh, or, or actually you can copy and paste in npm run build. But instead of doing that, uh, what I like to do instead, so this is saved as code, is go over into my Netlify.toml file and at the very top, specify the build command here. So I'm always running the npm script called build. And that'll overwrite whatever you have set in the Netlify UI. And that's it, that's all the steps. So let's push just this and get our first build out. We'll review our changes here really quick. We added the um, Gatsby cache plugin and we updated our build command, including cross env so that we get uh, Windows and Linux support. And we also added cross env as a dev dependency. So we'll say enable Gatsby incremental builds then we can push this commit and now over in netlify we should see a new build kicking off on our jib branch 
and here we go. So we'll check what the output looks like. So first things first, uh, Netlify has to set up the build environment. It does use a cache to cache things like your node version, the version of Ruby installed, all the kind of like baseline dependencies. You'll see that here, starting restored cache node version. And then did the same for Ruby. And node modules, that's nice. So remember, one minute and 18 seconds is going to be the time to beat once we start pushing incremental changes. Okay, so here we see the Netlify build plugins coming into play. Uh, these run different scripts at different life cycles of the build process. So we'll see here it's actually installing the Gatsby cache plugin that we specified. And then uh, first step is the pre-build lifecycle hook, and it looks for a Gatsby cache and it doesn't find one. And that, that totally makes sense. We haven't actually done anything incrementally. This is the first time we've been running with a cache. So now it moves on to the actual build command. And I see this is actually picking up the npm run build command we specified where it's using the experimental flag. Then it spits out this big list of pages because this is the first build that needs to rebuild the entire website. On post build, it stores the Gatsby cache and now it's live. So that build, how long did it take? Let's go back to deploys, search for only the jib branch. That one took one minute and 55 seconds. So a little bit longer than normal, but that's okay because this was the first time it was setting everything up. So now let's really put it to the test by making an incremental change. Let's go to my most recent post called BG Codes. And we'll put something up here called, hey, uh, I'm testing Gatsby incremental builds. So this is an incremental change. We should only see this page getting rebuilt. We'll uh, add, commit, and push the change. And now we should see another deploy kickoff on this jib branch. Here we go. So this should be faster this time around because it should find the Gatsby hash and only build what has changed. Now remember, if for some reason, you know, this is experimental, if for some reason things aren't working for you, Netlify has the option to clear cache and redeploy. That should fix any of your issues albeit with a longer build time. So here we go. It's restoring the build environment from cache. Remember this was the node version, Ruby version, NPM modules. It's got to go through that whole process again. Okay, and then moving into the build step. <clears throat> Still has to install the Netlify plugin Gatsby cache, which I feel like this is an optimization they could do in the future is to cache any build plugins. Now this time around, it should find a Gatsby cache. So here's pre-build. Hmm, this time it says no Gatsby cache found. Interesting goes through here, runs our proper build command and it builds. And this time we should see uh, a much smaller list of pages being built. Except for it built all of them. Interesting. And now the site is live. So how long did that build take? That build took a minute 55 on the dot. 
same as the previous. And let's run one more test with one more incremental change. Now here maybe we'll put a sad face because it's not working out the way we want it to. I'm so sad. Refresh the page, we should see a new build kicking off. And we'll go through the process again. Now you'll see here it says different build command detected, going to use the one specified in the Netlify configuration file. That means the Netlify.toml file that takes precedence over anything specified in the UI. So it's gonna take npm run build versus Gatsby build in the Netlify UI. Gatsby build would be incorrect as it doesn't have the special flag that we need. Yes, now it found a Gatsby cache. We're about to go fast. I love that message. Build process, build process, build process. Site is live. Now that seemed a lot faster. Minute five seconds. Okay. So you'll compare our original no Gatsby cache, one minute and 18 seconds to the cached version, one minute and five seconds. Let's do this one final time and make a happy face because it found the cache and it's working. Now, I'm happy. Just wanna give a couple runs to give you guys kind of the best picture of what kind of speed improvements you might get. Interesting that it took one full go around to actually pick up the cache. So you might not see these build improvements immediately, but maybe after one or two. Love the cheeky little console message though. Nice to see stuff like that. Found a Gatsby cache, very good. And this time let's confirm what pages it actually built. It should have only built the BG code codes page because that's the only article I changed. Okay, look at this. Uh, built pages, only blog BG codes, and that is correct. Site is live, and in how long? One minute, 20 seconds. So guys, um, we had a one minute and five second build and a one minute and 20 second build with Gatsby Cache. Normally, without this Gatsby Cache and incremental builds, I had a minute and 18 second build time. This is a very small site with maybe only about 40 or 50 pages. So, you know, you be the judge. Uh, is this worth it? If your site is larger, you'll probably see a lot more speed improvements than I did. But as you can see, it is very simple to set up. So thanks for watching. My name is Brad Garropy. You can find me on Twitter at Brad Garropy or at my own website, bradgarropy.com. Later, y'all.